first day of about a five day rain system coming in mid to late September. We sorely need it. Hoping to see this brown pasture turn green in the next couple weeks thanks to this rain. Tasty sheep. Alright, let's see it. Ooh, this is some good smoked lamb. And we. Back leg, back leg, front shoulder, front shoulder, kind of spine loin. Okay, it's October 8th, and we have really greened up and started growing some grass. The existing grasses are coming up, and we're seeing a lot of grass seed sprouting, including wherever we spill some hay, the seed that falls off of that hay sprouts up. A few years ago when we bought this place, that was pure, tall blackberry. We've mowed it a couple times now. And really happy that it's easily half grass, if not more, coming up in there. Lots of green. And now what we're trying to do is be careful. We're not moving the animals too fast. Because if we get in a hurry and this grass barely recovers and we put them straight onto it, it'd really set it back. 
So we're feeding them some hay. We've been feeding them tons of trees, holding them back. Because if we can give spots like this a few more weeks, it'll just be a much better spot to host the animals. We're starting to get mushrooms too. Getting our nice fall flush of oysters. So excited. They're so beautiful. Mm-hmm. And delicious. Delicious. Okay, so we're in the silvo pasture and Tina and I are needing to do a lot of cleanup work because going along with cutting down all these trees to feed the animals is needing to deal with them. And so we've got the chipper out here and we're trying to do a lot of chipping because then we can use these wood chips to mulch, make compost, do something better than burn. You know, we've got plenty of burn piles, but where we can, we're going to chip as well. You can see there's still plenty of trees in here. We were aggressive with cutting trees because it's too thick. If we hit the right ratio of trees to open land, we'll, we'll kind of maximize this area. So that's what we're figuring out. Most of the farm we're planting trees, but here we're removing. Hey everybody, let me tell you about the new pond I'm working on. So let me back up and turn a little bit. We're looking north. This east side is our property line, and that's Weyerhaeuser ground on the other side. I don't know how many videos ago, but I once talked about wanting to cut some drainage on the side of this road because in the winter, when rainfall and springs are actively running, water ran over that road, made it really muddy, and then went down the hill that way. So I have gone ahead and cut in a drainage swale along the, the road. As winter comes along and water starts running, I'll repair it as needed to make sure it works. And then I've got to decide exactly where I'm going to turn it down and drop it into the pond. But when I made that video months ago, I considered pulling the water all the way to this line of trees that Tina and I planted so that it could kind of passively water these trees. And that's still an option because the ditch could kind of be run where we're walking here and then at some point cross over this road or culvert under it and drop into the pond. So I'll be thinking about that. Got more work to do. I got out a bubble level and confirmed that I need to add several more feet of material where we're standing here. It's tallest over there on the uphill side by that fence. And so I might have to remove a little bit of the material that about touches that fence post and add it to here. It actually hit a point the last time I worked on the pond where the smooth bucket couldn't dig into that clay, but we've got some rain again. And I brought the grapple out here actually because those teeth can work just like a digging bucket and it dug in like butter. So I'm going to work with the grapple for a while and then switch back to the bucket when I need to. But I'm um, really pleased with how this little pond's coming together. And it's bigger than what we call tiny pond, the little bonus pond we dug last year. It's quite a bit bigger than that one. So hopefully. I'll be able to make good use of it. And then my last idea is what'll be fun is, since I have this ram pump set up and dropping into a water trough for this past summer, I could see moving forward from next year, we don't need this water trough anymore. If we can just pop the, or, or deliver this ram pumped water into the pond, then the pond will be the water trough and we don't need that water trough at all. And it's actually, the pond's a little bit below that water trough. So this delivery of water could just head in. And then the last thing I've really got to consider is pond overflow. So somewhere right in front of us here where we're looking, I'm imagining the, the spillway for overflow will come out and head down the landscape. We're thinking a whole lot about where our water goes in the winter and I'll probably do a whole video about it 
later this year because, um, in general, we need to figure out ways to make sure more of our heavy winter rains soak into the landscape before they leave. And this is an example I can show you where we're looking uphill. Now I pan the camera this way. We've got a bit of a gully. And then heading towards that brush pile and hay bale, it's actually going uphill again. So what that means is rainwater shoots straight down here. And unsurprisingly, it can get very wet and boggy down there. And in deep winter, there can even be shallow standing water in a few spots. So we're going to capture a bunch of that water in this pond. And then my thought is, what if I can manage to dig a drainage channel somewhere around where that hay bale is and that higher, drier area now has water on it rather than that being high and dry and this being a bog, let's spread that water out. So we've been on the property long enough that we can see what's wet and what's dry every year and we can start to do some more earthworks to try to work with that because if we can spread that water, those dry areas can become much more productive, grow trees, grow grass. Anywho, I'm going to get back to work on this pond. is really here and we are loving it. Late summer with kind of the climate we've got lately it gets hot and dry and then wildfire risk is scary so we were definitely so thankful when rain arrived and fall came and everything yeah cleared the smoke everything greened up. We've got the animals right here below the yurt and we'll keep moving them soon. We've got busy kids chatting. Ivy what are you chatting about? We've got firewood staged. We had one fire. Suddenly we had a we had a low of 39 one night, but it hasn't gotten close to that again. Most lows right now are around 50. So it'll be a few more weeks hopefully before we have another fire. But all is good. What are the kids doing? So kids are doing sports. So James is doing soccer. Arya started middle school and she started cross country and she's doing volleyball so the double sport for her that's a lot but she's really doing really well i just yeah. started preschool our monday and wednesdays are really busy because yeah. everybody has practice and i've been assistant coaching on james's soccer team so yeah that's been fun it's been fun and then in the winter time we plan to do no sports and hibernate yeah. like bears <laughs> yeah we're gonna do activities and then we're gonna be done for the winter <laughs> yep cool all right all right that's it everybody See you next time. Hello. Hello. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Ivy. Okay, you're gonna tell. What did we find, Ivy? We found. We found tomato. What else did we find outside? We found strawberries. Yeah. What else? We found acorn. Whoa. And what about this big thing? Uh. And these green things. Um, green onion. Mm hmm. Yeah. A bounty. Oh, these are, what are these? Green onions, you're right. Green onions. And we chased some turkeys, huh? <laughs>